a surface element. And likewise, you've got another surface element. Remember that it's a vector. Areas are vectors. They have a face of pointing. This one is so constructed that it faces... Per we've arranged the, the volume so that its face is perpendicular locally to that boundary. And likewise, this face is pointing in that direction. So we can talk about uh, if we are in region N1, uh, I should I put here, we're talking about the permittivity. So we're going from one region described by one given permittivity into another region described by a second. So this would be, it's made up of a magnitude delta sigma and it has a pointing, in this case, of um, N, N1. So there's the unit vector. There's the vector, it's made up of a magnitude delta sigma and it has a unit vector pointing in that direction. We've got our, our field, we've got, a, we've got a response field. The electric field is being applied in this region and the reaction field is a displacement vector that belongs to this first region. The electric field is also, the very same electric field is also present in this region of space and it generates a reaction field for this space which is another displacement vector and in general D2, the two displacements, the two displacement fields are not going to be identical. So you've got uh, You've got D in this region here, and D in this region here. And we need to find out what the continuity relationship is as we cross that boundary. Gauss's divergence theorem, in turn, came from the definition of the divergence operator. Remember, the divergence operator was a limit it was a limiting process on the integral. We let, we let this volume shrink down to nothing. And what we'll do is we'll make the, the length of this cylinder go down to nothing, which effectively achieves the way where we can collapse this whole internal volume to nothing. So we take the limit as V goes to zero of First of all, that surface integral of, there's the sigma, and we've got the projection of the displacement vector into the direction of uh, the normal, and it's the surface normal unit vector, and then we've got the volume integral, and we've got the four pi, and then there's the the volume charge density. <coughs> so under the action of the limit, the volume term will actually go to a situation, so if we just redraw that picture here, our, our, little, our volume's now shrunk to so the walls of the cylinder are almost now at zero length. So we've got one surface of the cylinder that's almost tangential locally at every single point along the boundary, and we've got the other side of the cylinder that's also there like that, on the other side of the boundary. So that all, what we end up in this situation is with not a volume charge density, but an area charge density. So we can talk now about not 4 pi rho, but 4 pi, I'll just use a new symbol, eta. So this is charge per unit area instead of 
charge per unit volume because the volume's now disappeared under the limit. We've now just got surface charge. Surface charge on one side of the boundary, surface charge on the other side of the boundary. And again, our, we multiply by the area element because that gives us an ultimate charge quantity. Because if you multiply eta, which has units of charge per unit area, Air is charge per unit area, multiply it by area, means that the areas cancel and you're left with a charge quantity ultimately. So this describes the amount of charge. So what we have here is that we've got 4 pi eta d sigma. That looks after effectively what happens to the volume component under the limit where it shrinks to nothing. In terms of the, the surface component, the surface integral leads to a result where you've got delta 1, and we're looking at the, the normal component, first of all, in the first medium, and then you've got the normal component the second medium, and then you've got the, the common area term. When you equate the two, you've got it's a D, so maybe those at the back can't get. Can you still see it's not this isn't blocking anyone at the back? Okay. So we've got the You'll notice, I meant to say by the way, that any, any operation, because these two ends of the cylinder aren't the only area of the cylinder, you also have the, the circumferential circumfer area of the cylinder as well. If you were to take <coughs> an, an element of area on the cylinder, you will have a corresponding element on the, on the other diameter that will cancel it. So that any operation you take, either on this side of the boundary or that side of the boundary, actually on the wall of the cylinder itself, will get complete cancellation. Which is why it never takes any part in the whole exercise in the end anyway. It's only these top two surfaces, or these end surfaces, that have a, a part to play. So when you do um, the surface integral, you're left with only the components from the ends of the cylinder. And you're looking at the component of D that's in the direction that that area faces, and likewise with the, the other areas. So that's why we've got this normal, the first, and then the normal from the second, multiplied by the area equal to 4 pi eta d sigma, because the areas are common, which means you can cancel these two areas and you're left with the fact that delta N1, or not delta, D, and this is the normal on the other side, we can just summarize as delta N. Delta D normal is equal to 4 pi Eta. That is the equation of continuity for the electric displacement vector across a boundary. And it, it's the, our first result that well, we've got the other three to go now. 